Hello, my name is Nikolai Slavkov and I'm a professor at the University of Ottawa in Canada. For this video I have been asked to address two questions. The first question is about socio-political and socio-cultural factors and how they relate to child bilingualism, multilingualism and family language policy. In this regard, it is important to mention that Canada is a country with two official languages, English and French. This doesn't mean that everyone is bilingual in these two languages. In fact, you may be surprised to find out from national census data that only about 18% of the population report that they can carry on a conversation in both official languages. But the fact that Canada has two official languages is helpful because people are generally aware of the usefulness and benefits of bilingualism. Now, this is also related to the issue of prestige, and one could argue that languages other than English and French in Canada have a lower level of perceived prestige. That is, the languages of immigrant minorities or indigenous people may be perceived as less important or less useful. In this relation, some of my work indicates that parents sometimes face tough choices when it comes to their family language policies, especially when multilingualism is concerned. For example, should a family language policy focus on supporting a child in acquiring English and French, Canada's two official languages, or perhaps only one of the two official languages in combination with another language that does not have an official status, like English and Mandarin? Or perhaps the family is able to leverage the right strategies and resources to support a multilingual child a child who can use both of Canada's two official languages as well as another language, a heritage language or an indigenous language. This would be an optimal outcome, of course, but we know that it takes some solid planning and effort. And this is where the second question comes into play, the question about the important relationship between family language policy and language policy in education. Here I focus on provinces where the majority language is English, so the province of Quebec is excluded from this discussion. In these English-speaking provinces, generally speaking, parents have an interesting choice to make. Should they send their child to a school where the medium of instruction is English or French? And this choice may result in a monolingual, bilingual or multilingual repertoire for a child. For example, if an English-speaking family sends their child to an English medium of instruction school, their child may develop as a monolingual speaker. If that same family, however, chooses French immersion, both where both French and English are used as medium of instruction, then the child may develop as a bilingual in Canada's two official languages. Now, if a Bulgarian-speaking family sends their child to a French school and the child still picks up English from community exposure in an English-majority-speaking province, then that is one way of ensuring that the child grows up multilingual. These are, of course, just a few very simple examples of possible strategies and outcomes of combining family language policies with school language choices. For a deeper and much more complex discussion of some of these issues, feel free to read some of my publications or send me an email at nikolai, N-I-K-O-L-A-Y dot Slavkov, S-L-A-V-K-O-V at uottawa.ca. Thank you very much.